the bus topology. We're going to take a look first at the physical topology of the bus. The bus topology is a single cable that connects all the devices to the network. This cable that's going to connect all the devices is known as either the backbone, the bus cable, or the trunk. The bus cable and all the devices that are attached to it are known as the network segment. The length of cable and all the devices attached to that specific cable are known as a network segment. All devices on the segment share the cable for communication. We are going to take a look at other videos on Ethernet and we're going to look at crashes and collisions and all that stuff. Right now I want to keep this at a fundamental level and get a basic understanding of what's going on here. So a bus, all the devices on that specific segment are going to share that cable for communication. Only one device can communicate at a time. If two or more devices try to speak at the same time, try to communicate at the same time, we wind up with something known as a collision, and then nothing gets through. It all comes to a crashing halt, magic things happen, we'll worry about that later, but understand on a bus, one device can communicate at one time if it wants to get the signal out there successfully. On a bus topology, devices are going to attach to that trunk by something known as a T connector. In the old days, we used to use something called a vampire tap to connect to the network. What's kind of interesting about a bus topology is that signals will continue. You send a signal and it's like a really kick butt echo. It will continue back and forth, continue back and forth, bounce, 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 in order to keep that bouncing from happening, in order to stop the bouncing. At each end of that cable network, at that bus network, we have to have something called a terminator. The terminator is going to pull in that signal, it's a resistor, and it's going to dampen and destroy that signal. Otherwise, what we get is something called signal bounce. Again, the signal go back and forth, and if you remember, only one device can't communicate at any time, and so if a signal is sent and it keeps bouncing back and forth, well, no communication, the whole network will go down. There are goods and bads, there's goods, yeah, there's good and bad about any network, and this is what you need to know for your exams. The good about a bus topology is that it's the cheapest of all LAN technologies. It's fairly simple to set up. There's no special configuration required, and you don't need any special equipment past what you need just to get in a network to use the bus topology. So if it's so great, then why aren't people using it as much? Well, here's the bad part. A break in the cable anywhere in that cable will cause the entire network to go down. For those of you who celebrate Christmas or put up Christmas lights, if you remember the old fashioned Christmas lights where you'd pull them out every once a year, plug it in and have to go from each light to make sure which light wasn't working because the whole thing was out and you go light to light to light to light to light and you'd find the bad light, that's a bus. You'd have to go light to light to light to light to figure out where the bad thing was. That's a big downfall when it comes to bus topology. It's hard to shut down the network to add or remove a device or a node. So let's say that you're working in an office and there's five computers, you're the new hire, they have to bring the entire network down just for you in order to install your computer. So depending on how long that takes, nobody's getting anything done. It's hard to troubleshoot. Again, remember the Christmas light analogy. You gotta figure out where the break is and you have to test every device and every part of that cable in order to isolate who's causing the problem. Adding network computers to the network can slow the entire network down. Keep in mind, the entire network is sharing the signal at the same time. So if one computer sends something, everybody has to listen to it. When we're dealing with more and more computers, you have an increased chances of collisions, of, of those signals crashing. And so the more computers you add to it, it's pulling down the bandwidth. It's pulling down the ability to communicate faster which is why buses are used for small networks, if at all, anymore. The bus logical topology. So we had the physical topology, but as we said before, it's also part of a logical topology. In the bus logical topology, the signal is sent to all devices on the network or network segment. 
the most commonly used of all the logical topologies. Now, here is where things can get a little tricky. The bus physical layout is pretty much unused for the most part. Now, you're going to run into it, but most offices, most professional, professionally set up offices, aren't going to use a bus topology anymore because it's just so, it breaks down, it's, it's no good. But the logical topology is the most commonly used topology. When we start talking about Ethernet and all these other things, you're going to find out that the bus topology is the logical topology that's being used pretty much everywhere. By the way, when I say everywhere, I'm sure there's geeks out there who are going, no, 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 just go with me on this one. When we're dealing with the bus logical topology, we're talking about the signal sent to all the devices on a network segment. When we take a look at something called a star topology, what we find out is we break down the segments from the computer to a switch or a computer to a router. So as a logical topology, it works great. As a physical topology, not so much. The next video, we're going to take a look at the ring topology.